Hello, this is Monkey Game for Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing SFML tutorial series. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we covered loading a sprite sheet and displaying a sprite on screen. And today we're going to take that one step farther, and we're going to look at using a sprite sheet. Uh, it's going to be a fairly quick tutorial because there's not a whole lot to it. Um, a sprite sheet doesn't actually exist in SFML. Uh, but all it really is is a texture with multiple sprites on a single texture. And there's a lot of reasons behind using these. Uh, first off, it's a lot faster to load one file than it is to load, say, 32 files or however many frames of animation you've got. Um, but most importantly, it's a lot faster um, to move it into memory and keep it in memory. So every time you have to do a texture switch inside of um, graphic memory, there's a lot of overhead, a lot of cost to this. So if you put all of your sprites together in one texture or as few as textures as possible, you're going to get huge rewards on the performance on the uh, graphics card. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, again, this series assumes that you have seen all the other parts in the series or already know the material covered. So I'm not going to go back over anything we've already done. Uh, we'll start fresh and go from there. So if I don't cover something, chances are I covered it in the previous parts of this tutorial. Um, so go back and check that out. And also, once again, there is a text-based version of this tutorial available on Game From Scratch. So don't worry too much if you don't catch the code. Uh, you can download it all. I'll put a link down below. Uh, eventually, I'll also put together a table of contents so you can see the entirety of this tutorial. I should probably do that today. I'm getting pretty big for this tutorial as it stands. Uh, so anyways, let's jump right in. Um, so as I said earlier, uh, a spray sheet doesn't really exist in uh, SFML. In most game engines, there is some kind of an implementation for spray sheets and for uh, switching between frames and providing animation. But keep in mind, SFML is not technically a game engine, and this is the kind of functionality that it is missing. But it does provide most of the hooks you need. And rolling your own uh, animation system or um, sprite sheet system or, or texture atlas, whatever the name wants to be, um, isn't really that hard and there are already libraries out there that do it for you so at the end of the series when I uh, when I put this all together into a, a full game uh, I'll either roll my own or I'll use an existing system so you will see a more elegant solution than what we're doing here later on but we are going to show you very basic animation as we get into it uh, first things first we actually need um, a texture to use and I'm going to use the same one I used the dragon earlier I'm going to use the full set of textures from here it's right here You see, this is actually um, three frames of walk animation, three frames walking left, three frames walking right, three frames of walking up. And it's all together on one sheet. Now, one point of caution here, uh, this texture sheet is actually 900 pixels by 1200 pixels. That's the size it came from uh, the people that made it. And in your game, you probably want to keep your texture sheets to a size of two uh, dimension in both directions. Now, they don't have to be the same size, but they should be a power of two uh, one way or the other. So meaning uh, 256 by 256, 512 by 256, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 1024, etc. Any of those combinations, the graphics hardware like it. In fact, up until OpenGL ES2, I believe, um, power of two textures were actually required. So you might find if you're porting your SSML, SFML application to Android devices or iOS devices, and you're dependent on OpenGL as 1.x, you're going to want to stick to power of two textures. But even if you're not, I believe they still perform better. So when making your own sprite sheets, even if it's just padding or there's empty space or whatever, you're probably best off to make it uh, a power of two dimension in both directions. And so again, in this case, I am not. This is the, the actual and complete sheet we're going to use. I grab that guy. And I am going to copy him into my project. I'm reusing the uh, basic project from our last example. So that's why the uh, single frame texture that we used last time is still there. All right, now let's jump on back to Visual Studio. And now we've got to um, well, write some code. First, let's start with just loading that sprite sheet in place. Um, this is basically the exact same thing that we covered last time. Uh, so we need a texture. So, load the sprite sheet into the texture. Uh, images dragon frames.png. And eventually, we are going to need a sprite. So, let's create a sprite from said texture. And now, that sprite at this point in time is going to contain that entire sheet. Let's just see what happens. Okay run 
All right, there you see. So we're a 640 by 640 window, so we're only seeing a small excerpt of the overall shape. But as you can see, all of our frames are in here. So now what we want to do is just grab this guy right here, this single frame of animation. And this is very simply done. We can actually do it in the sprite itself. Right here, you can pass in a second parameter, an int rect. So this is a rectangle saying basically my source, uh, instead of using the entire texture, I just want this portion of it. So we're going to pass in the dimensions. So uh, we're starting at the very, very beginning. And as I said, my sprite sheet is 3 by 4 and it's 300 by 900. So the dimensions are 300 and 400 per um, sprite within that. And done. And really, that's all you need to do to get that um, portion within. Now let's go ahead and draw that. And now we should just see that single first frame of animation. Done. Okay, so that is really all that's required to turn uh, a texture into a sprite sheet. You're really just using a portion of it, and that's it. Uh, now let's look at actually looping through them a bit. And we're going to change things up a little bit. Instead of using this guy here, We'll turn that into a variable. And rect, rect source sprite. I'm actually going to start on the second frame of animation because it's sort of a standing frame. When we're done here, our animation is going to look a little weird, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so instead of using the uh, passing the int rect into the sprite constructor, we'll use our variable now instead, like so. Uh, functionally identical code, we just moved one frame over and used it as a variable. And the reason for this is because we're actually going to change that rectangle uh, as we change frames. In order to do that, we're going to need um, to be able to tell the passage of time. So we're going to use a clock here to do our animation. Uh, we covered clock earlier, uh, so just head on back to that tutorial if this is all new to you. Uh, but inside of... Uh, do I want to put it inside of our loop? No, I don't after our loop, but before our update, we're just gonna do if clock dot elapsed, get elapsed time as seconds greater than one. So every second, it's basically what we were saying there, this code will execute every second. And all we're gonna do is if rect source sprite dot left, so left is the, left edge of the uh, of the rectangle within the texture. So basically we're saying if it is equal to 600, so this means that we're on the, uh, here, let me just bring the texture back up. If it's 600, so this will be 0, 300, 600. So that means if we're currently on this frame, we're just going to want to go back to the first frame. And in that case, so again, this is sort of hackish to use um, our particular sprite sheet. So you would most no doubtedly create your own class that handles, you know, so you could set frames of animation and retrieve each individual frame. But this is a quick, easy way to show you how it's done. So all we're going to do in that case is set left to zero. So if you're on the last frame, go to the first frame. Uh, otherwise, increment by 300. So we're just jumping through each frame as we go. Now the next guy is the magic line of code. And this is sprite.set texture rect. And that is just kind of updating the source rect of said texture. And then finally, since we processed our clock, uh, we just want to start the timer all over again, like so. Okay. so. Our logic here, we create, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we create the source rect instead of passing it in as a variable. And then every single second, we check to see if we're on the last frame. If we are, we go back to the first, otherwise we increment. And we update the rectangle so the source of our sprite is then changed. And everything else stays unchanged. So let's go ahead and run that. And here you see, frame, 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 frame frame. Now you may notice this the animation looks kind of crappy and there's a good reason for that. Uh, well first off there's only three frames of animation and you probably would want 10 to 20 in a walk cycle. Uh, but the other thing you're seeing here is we're going here, 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 
here, here, here, here, here, etc. And what you would actually want to do with this with this animation, your logic would probably be first frame, second frame, third frame, second frame, first frame, second frame, third frame, etc. So you're we were actually cycling through them um, left to right, where you should actually be kind of going back to the middle frame as the transitionary step. Uh, but that just makes the, the demonstration code a little bit convoluted. And so if, if you are working with a similar type sprite sheet where your neutral frame is in the middle, there's very good possibility that you want to bounce back to it as opposed to scroll across them. Um, but that's it. Uh, we could just have easily switched to this sheet by adding um, this guy, making the Y400, and we'll go to our second frames of animation here. Oops, I made an error here somewhere. I don't want to think about why that didn't work. Uh, but really, it's just a matter of offsetting it down and you get your separate frames. I think my frames might not be actually sized the right way. Uh, but again, neither here nor there. So really, that's about it. Uh, one thing I want to mention very, very, very quickly here, though, is if you do want to create your own class that returns a sprite per frame, do it. Um, the sprite class itself is very lightweight. You can create them pretty much on the fly. Uh, you may not want to create it in a super tight loop, but if you have uh, one sprite per frame and you want to just return each sprite per, per frame, totally fine. A sprite is not a big class. It does not use up a lot of memory. So you can actually have one sprite for every frame of animation if that's how you want to design things. Feel free. You could dynamically create a sprite, as in, you know, get current frame and have it return a dynamic sprite. Go ahead. A sprite is a light class. Texture, not so much. Sprite, yes, very light. Feel free to make them and use them as you wish. All right, so that's about it. Um, not a really, really advanced tutorial by any means, but it is a bit different from Sprite itself, so I figured I'd cover it separately. So that's the basics of using multiple sprites on a single sheet, uh, which is referred to, again, as either a sprite sheet or a texture atlas, and uh, very, very basic animation. Now, obviously, in a game, you would do a lot more things. You'd do transitions, you would do... Um, you know, uh, frame controls, you would probably have a much cleaner class describing it, but the basics stay all the same. Uh, so that was it. Stay tuned for the next part. See you later. Bye.